that uh, what the problem someone have that they want to dismantle hindutva so uh, the answer what i found was very simple that uh, if you you uh, suppose that is the time of pandemic the islamic terrorism the radical islamic they are on the rise and at the time of pandemic someone wants to choke the supply of oxygen so at the time of this problem someone wants to choke the solution process and hindutva it is not any ism we 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 are a solution to this this problem we are a healer to the wounded globe so that's uh, someone wants to choke that process so so i think that's the answer to that and uh, uh, again my book uh, name is bleeding india for aggressors thousand cards and it has got a chapter on the finances of this 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 network so i have gone through a few case studies so many other terrorist attack in sri lanka uh, some of the instances uh, like uh, bhima koregaon what happened there so what i found that there was a nexus and that was a quadriga and what that quadriga was that uh, the first element of that quadriga was the radical islamist in alliance with the, the second part was uh, 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 communist and uh, uh, the the third part was the christian missionaries and the fourth portion which which provided cover fire to this troika was an uh, gang or you can say a band of uh, activists uh, uh, lawyers uh, intellectuals uh, people from cultural fields uh, people uh, legal professionals and all this combined they provide cover fire to this troika why this troika was formed because there was a cmi the cmi means a common minimum intention and that was followed by a, a cmp the common minimum program so this troika has the common minimum program of bleeding india of destructing india of breaking india and this fourth they they provide cover fire they provide narrative to this troika and you know they they function on a little yo format the little yo means little yo is a cardinal number which means four it is a 3 plus 1 number so the first three they they work on a cmp and the, the uh, fourth they provide logistical and cover fire and they provide a narrative to that i start with the example i will focus more on the finances so how this quadri guy is financed so let us take a case of uh, the one of the most famous case from kerala the akhila asokan case she married one muslim guy safin jahan so this akhila asokan and safin jahan the case was very clear they both were not minor so if they want to marry a hindu girl wants to marry a muslim guy nobody can no law can stop them and ultimately that what happened the supreme court uh, favored uh, in the supreme court judgment they went into the favor of this marriage but the most important point that both this akila asokan and safin jahan they were from a very humble background they were not very economically sound and for the legal fee 1 crore rupees was paid so this was a matter of surprise that these guys they are from such a humble background and who are the people those who are paying 1 crore as their legal fee and what is the outcome of that so two questions are there from where this 1 crore is coming so the answer to that that pfi popular front of india the most famous these days they funded this legal fees they funded these 1 crore rupees and what was the output the output was also very simple that they celebrated this as a victory and they celebrated the akhila asokan as a symbol of victory and and they celebrated it everywhere that look we have won this case matlab as as a religion as a uh, you you say that it is love jihad in, but we have won this case so that celebration you know that is used by them later on in in on in different uh, things and again why this nexus is formed because radical islamists and communists on the first hand they are opposed to each other how what is the common element binding them so i will refer to the founding fathers of the communist party of india comrade maulana hasrat mohani sahab 
he gave a formula for this alliance. He said that Islam and communism both are same. If you add God Allah to communism, it becomes Islam. And if you minus Allah, it again uh, becomes communism. So this was a formula. So you can be a radical Islamist at one time and just by in a fraction of a second, you can be a communist on the other second. So this was a formula by Comrade Maulana Hasrat Mohani that you can shift from a radical Islamist uh, you know, platform to a, a communist platform in a matter of seconds. <clears throat> uh, Ravi Ranjan sir was talking about uh, 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 this halal jihad. One jihad, which you must have seen just two days before, a priest from Kerala, his name is Man Mar Joseph. He's a bishop from Palai. He talked about love jihad and narcotics jihad. In India, narcotics jihad was used in any news article for the first time. But let us go back. In 2017, EFSAS, European Foundation from South Asia Studies, in November 2017, they came up with a, a, a report on narco jihad and that what this narco jihad was. So that report mentions one uh, um, interview by uh, Pakistani journalist named Ahmed Rashid. He interviewed a Pakistani official. So what the Pakistani official said on this narco jihad that opium is permissible because it is consumed by the Kafirs, not by the Afghanis and not by the Muslims. And uh, the reports again mentions that warlord, warlords, insurgents, drug traffickers and corrupt officials saw an opportunity of abusing the vulnerability of the state which resulted from ongoing violent conflicts and extreme autocracy and were capable of establishing dominion and monopoly over key territories inland and particularly its peripheries. That report again mentions that now at, 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 on this date, Afghanistan amounts to 90% of the heroin and opium production of the world. And again, this is just not about economy. The, the output, the economic output of this opium trade is fueling, is funding terrorist organizations. And again, you know, that is a, a religious motive is behind that, which, which is called as narco jihad. But in India, I was surprised that for the first time, two days back, the uh, 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 Christian priest, he, he just uh, mentioned this narco jihad uh, thing. Let us talk about this Bhima Koregaon uh, story. So ultimately what came out, ultimately what uh, it looked like, that it was a class conflict. Uh, uh, Dalits, those who want to celebrate their victory over the Peshwas, and they went into conflict with the Brahmins. But when the Pune police and later on NIA started investigating into the matter, what came out? There was a plan to assassinate. There was a plan to kill the Prime Minister of India. And again, it's a very interesting case about this quadriga of functioning that it was not a, a, a project of a single-handed person or, or, or a particular organization. The Christian missionaries were involved. The Maoists were involved. The, the radical Islamists were involved. I am giving you an example. Rona Wilson. The main conspirator of uh, behind the plot to assassinate the prime minister, his name popped it up into the Bhima Korega investigation. He was planning and he was lobbying to revoke the ban on PFI in Jharkhand. So, see, a uh, 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 Rona Wilson, a Christian, he was planning, he was lobbying to get a ban revoked on a radical Islamist organization called PFI. Again, the second name, name was uh, Jesus Priest, who uh, the most uh, privileged prisoner, Kisten um, Swami, who died in a prison of his choice. 
so his name was also there and uh, he was a christian missionary and what he really did he was a member of the cpi maoist and he was responsible for the international relations for uh, underground uh, cadres for, for for building underground cadres so when you see this case you will find a web the missionaries involved the the radical islamists involved the cpi maoists involved and again a backup team a legal team a, a, a cultural team a human right organizations team a a a, a, a team which which um, uh, declares themselves or who who uh, portrays themselves as the most intellectual let us focus on the financing part how this this these things are funded so let us discuss the bcci story i have mentioned that in my book also bcci it was a bank founded by a pakistani called aga hasan abidi so there is a american movie uh, the hollywood movie called operation sea chase that is based on that uh, bcci on the collapse of that bcci the bcci that got permission in 1977 to open a representative office in mumbai and in 1979 they had a full fledged branch and surprisingly chaudhry charan singh the minority government based on some intels they cancelled the license of that bank and again to the surprise in 1983 this bank got the consent and it finally collapsed worldwide in 1991 what this bank did and how it got permission the american dea the canadian royal mounted police the indian agencies they were all opposed to giving license to this bank and who was the reserve bank governor sardar manmohan singh ji the great sardar manmohan singh ji he gave license to a bank regarding which there was a intel that it is a drug money bank it is a terrorist bank and despite that they got the license and finally what they did in india this aga hasan abidi he traveled across the country he funded the khalistani movement he he funded the insurgents in northeast he funded the maoist activities and again he established the heroin and the high end drugs cartel network in india this is what the bcci did before collapsing and the permission was given by the mr clean sardar manmohan singh ji the kind of penetration these organizations are having in our political system in our bureaucratic system that despite having intel from the dea from the worldwide from many countries and your agencies nobody can stop them from getting the license again the second bcci in our days is a himalayan bank it is a bank operating in nepal and it is uh, it has collaborated with one bank of pakistan called habib bank and it is exactly doing the same thing what bcci did you go to the eastern borders of this country and all the mess all the terrorist activities all the radical activities that is being funded by this himalayan bank so there is not one you know way of funding these activities like we came up with fcra 2020 there was a problem to them there was a lot of hue and cry about that fcra 2020 but you will be surprised that again the fund flow the flow of foreign funds is no less it is same as before because they have come up with, with they have come up with new modes of operandi they have come up with uh, something called pocket funding so we need to you know we are supposed to be a soft kind of democracy and these problems are not exclusive with india many countries they are facing the same problems like uh, us let us take an example of uh, russia in 2012 Russia was having a law called Russian Foreign Agent Law. 
Russia found that it is not sufficient. So in 2015, they came up with a law. It is like our FCRA that undesirable organizations law 2015. And you will be again surprised that the organizations, those who were, uh, those who got problems because of this law, were the same organizations. Those who are creating mess in India, the Oxfam, the Amnesty, the Carnegie, the Open Society Foundation of George Soros, Hungary, the banned George Soros. China, what we are facing today, China has faced three decades back. In 1987, China prosecuted the hand four persons related to George Soros. 